this game, the revenge game against the Colts, who turned them in during the AFC Championship game, something Robert Kraft and the Patriots paid a heavy price for. But Kraft is not holding a grudge against Roger Goodell. Here's what Jared Bell wrote in USA Today Sports. Last week, Roger Goodell was seen cordially chatting with Kraft during NFL owners' meetings in New York, a spirit that several executives maintain also existed behind the scenes. They also attended a dinner the night before the meeting with other owners in attendance. Skip, how should Brady feel about Kraft being so friendly with the commissioner? Stephen A., I believe that Tom Brady should be further infuriated about this this relationship that has suddenly been rekindled just the way it was before. I think he will be infuriated by it. I, I hope it further fuels him to take it out on every opponent on their schedule, starting obviously with the Colts and, and finishing at the Super Bowl. But this speaks again, and, and again, I'm a Brady supporter, so forgive me, Stephen A., for, for beating this potential dead horse here, but I still don't think Tom Brady is getting near enough credit for the fight he just fought against the NFL, against City Hall, and won, winning the right, obviously, to play the first four games of the season for which he was about to be suspended. Remember, his coach never supported him from the start. Bill Belichick basically said, don't look at me, ask the quarterback. I don't know anything about these footballs. Remember the little speech he gave? My cousin Vinny's speech. No, don't, don't ask me. I don't know anything about that. You, you guys got to ask Tom about that. Wow. So don't blame me. Don't look at me. Don't accuse me. Accuse him if that's what you want to do. And then you recall what happened. Bob Kraft, again, for whom you have a lot of respect, so do I, went to the Super Bowl. They, the plane landed. He marched to the podium and said, I demand you, you will apologize to, to this franchise for what you have accused us of. And then you recall what happened at the league meetings in San Francisco back in May. Bob Kraft folded his tent and went home. He made his concession speech. I'm a league man, I'm paraphrasing, and I, I don't want to fight this anymore. And he accepted the million dollar penalty that they got, the fine, and the two draft picks. It's, it's, it's a significant punishment that he accepted. They have lost their first rounder in 2016 and the fourth rounder in 2017, and that's still on the books. Even though Tom Brady won his fight in court, Bob Kraft, nope, you, you got me. I'm, I'm, I'm a league man. And then, of course, he turned tail again, or to turn tables, I should say again, switched back around and was on Tom Brady's side again a little later saying, I was wrong to put my faith in the league because they still held by the, the four-game suspension. He's playing both sides against the middle. But in the end, he's mostly on the side of the league that he loves and for which he's one of the prominent owners and on, on prominent committees, in, including the finance committee. He's a driving force in this league, and I still think that Bob Kraft opted for the league over his quarterback. So the quarterback has fought a lonely fight with no help from his coach and very little, if any, help from his highly respected owner. And yet Tom Brady solo went to court in an away game in Manhattan against the National Football League and Roger Goodell and won. And yet now it's come full circle where we thought there might be a little bit of bad blood between Robert Kraft and Roger Goodell. And Jarrett Bell points out, nope, they're having beautiful little conversations both in front of reporters and they say behind the scenes have gone to dinner together with other owners. Great. Am I shocked by that? I am absolutely not shocked. Should Brady be miffed to the point of being infuriated about it? You better believe he should and I hope he gets more and more infuriated for Sunday night's game. Your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are, number one, I respectfully disagree with you, but I use the word respectfully because I understand where you're coming from. I just think you're missing something here. And in the interest of full disclosure, before I elaborate on that, let me say this. Um, Robert Kraft is not only somebody I respect, I revere the man. I have a tremendous amount of respect for him. I think that his, his, um, you know, his integrity is impeccable. Um, I'm an admirer of his and... It doesn't matter what times we have to be critical of things that we see. It's just what we're seeing. 
but as it pertains to who this man is, what he stands for, I've had the distinct pleasure and honor of speaking to him one-on-one -on, -one on several occasions, and my respect and admiration for this man cannot be measured. Let me be very, very open and honest in saying that. Having said all of that, Skip, I am of the mindset that you are overreacting to all of this, but rightfully so, because I think that what needs to be said here, this is just my personal opinion from an outside observer, because I've certainly never spoken to Mr. Kraft about this at all. It has never happened. I think we've all been hoodwinked. I think that the commissioner and the National Football League made it clear that for the sake of players and their complaints and some of the things they've said about competing against the Patriots and what have you, that it was made very, very clear to Mr. Kraft that, look, we have to do this. We have to be in pursuit of Tom Brady. You know what we're going to do. Just eat it up. We'll probably lose. It's much ado about nothing, but we have to go this route for the sake of the integrity of the league. I think the reason why it's easy for Robert Kraft to stomach Roger Goodell in the NFL League and how supposedly, you know, fences amended and all of this other stuff is because I think, and not to mention the fact Tom Brady going through what he's going through, but still clearly having the respect and deference to Mr. Kraft uh, that he does and to the Patriots as an organization, I think because Tom Brady was told, and I think because Tom Brady fully understands that Tom Brady had to go through this because the NFL has to make it look the part. I think at the end of the day, the NFL knows it doesn't have much of a case. It's not something that they could win. I think all along, something of that magnitude ended up happening. Now, to be clear to you, Skip, I didn't always feel this way, but watching things unfold, the federal judge, the holes in the Ted Wells investigation that if Skip can see and I can see, certainly Jeffrey Kessler and the NFL Players Association was going to see, along with all of this nonsense that's been going on, I think the only reason it's gotten to this point, I've, I've recently drawn this conclusion, the only reason it's gotten to this point is because so many players have said they feel like they have they're at an unfair disadvantage against the Patriots because the Patriots seem to be knowing what they're doing and the Patriots seem to be cheating. It's not just about Spygate. you got to remember, it was like five or six tapes uh, that we were told Roger Goodell had that was destroyed during Spygate. Yep. And then, as my caller, Carlton in Massachusetts, oh religiously God. reminds me because he calls in every day. He calls in every day, Skip, to <laughs> complain about the Patriots. I've never seen anybody fixated on, an, on, 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 on being negative about a team in my life the way this guy is. But they talk about how there was more than 40 tapes that Roger Goodell had in his possession about Spygate and the Patriots, et cetera. So I think that when you hear NFL players regurgitating those comments, even by callers and by listeners and viewers and stuff like this, and you realize that there's some truth to it as it pertains to players in the NFL actually feeling this way, I think ultimately Roger Goodell and those guys knew that they had engaged in a losing proposition, but they had to do what they had to do to make it look good, which is why these guys can talk and still go about the business of doing NFL business because it just seemed like something that was par for the course. Okay, I hear what you're saying. Now I ask you, put yourself for one moment in Tom Brady's shoes and realize that most of the NFL world believes that you cheated and you lied about it, okay? And your coach did not have your back from the start. He said nothing to have your back. Pretty significant, I think. And then your owner had your back, didn't have your back, then sort of sat on the fence and kind of had your back a little bit well, at the end. Really? Well, I think, I think the part that you're missing that I'm saying, Skip, is that if Tom Brady sat back and said nothing, I would be right with you. The problem is he still speaks about Mr. Kraft, just like he did last week. Yeah. He speaks no. about Mr. Kraft, the Patriots organization, and Bill Belichick in the same fashion he always has. So it just seems to me that something going, something is going on internally where everybody's in on it but us, okay. where they know 
all right, this is this is what we have to go through. Yep. I'm only getting that because of what I'm seeing transpire and the fact that I see a Tom Brady that's taking it out on opponents, but but it's basically to validate his greatness to the viewing public. Excuse yep. me, I'm still that dude. I'm still this four-time Super Bowl champion. Let us not forget that. But outside of that, in terms of the nuances, like when we talk about him coming to New York to go to court, guess what, Skip? That's just the day he don't have to practice. That's just the day that a few hours that he don't have to be in training camp. He didn't miss yeah, anything. There's nothing that has practice. happened during the regular to... season. I'm... Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, nobody yeah, likes yeah, to practice Yeah, 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 we guy. understand that. But I don't, I, listen, listen, well, well, everybody, listen, Skip, I don't know anybody that loves to work more than you do. But you still take a couple of days off for Ernestine or somebody. No, every yeah, now and then, no I'm just too. saying, everybody yeah, you, takes you, a day you off. You leave and I have to leave. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, they, 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 well uh, you're right look, about that. Okay. Because I'll be damned if I'm not going to take my days okay, off. Look, you're right about that. I know you are. So here's the point. We saw Reese. I can't remember That's what a right. game it was. Brady ran on the field before the game and, and gave Bob Kraft a kiss on the cheek. I forget yes. when it was. But but that's they, they still have a very close relationship. Yep. I get that. Tom Brady will never say or do anything to hurt his team or his franchise. He is the model citizen quarterback in that regard. I will bet you, though, privately not pleased with the way he hasn't been supported. I, because I, I've heard some of these things from. You can Agreed. say, okay, you, and I guess I, I get where you're getting it from. I understand that. What I'm saying to you is that I don't. It, it, even if you don't, you don't say something to hurt them. You could be quiet. He does seem to be the same Tom Brady. The relationship seems to be the same yep. as it has always been. Now, if it's not, then that means Tom Brady is putting on a damn good acting job. Yep. And if he's putting on that good of an acting job, who knows where else he's used his acting expertise. All right. All so let's right. keep that in mind. Right. All right. Here we, we go. We got to go to break. But right or wrong, guys, shot. at the end of the day, it's business. So they have to put their differences mm. aside. What does the NFL make? Over $11 billion a year? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Did you guys see that catch last night?